Hi, today I'm going to talk about cine cameras from the late 30s until about 1962 63. 1939, as Europe was on the brink of war, the Brolet's camera manufacturing company in Switzerland, um, with a wonderful designer called Mr. Belosky, came up with this little camera called the L8. It took 8mm film, and 8mm film, as I explained before, was basically 16mm, but it went through the camera once, turned over the film, and did the other side, and then in the manufacturer, in the processing, it would be cut in two. So you then got 8mm. This camera, beautifully designed, beautifully precisioned, engineered, really sweet little motor, set the hallmark and the benchmark for cameras of the 1940s, cine cameras. Very light, small, compact. This Kodak of a few years later has a slightly more modern design. It's gone into the grey, but it's still a single one lens, one viewfinder, and still a very street sounding motor. And you will set the aperture like on the bolet manually. All well and good. But what happened in that situation that you needed a telephoto lens or a wide angle lens? Zoom lenses were incredibly expensive and lacked quality. So manufacturers came up with the idea of the turret camera. The turret camera, as you can see here, has three lenses, one for wide angle, a standard lens, and a telephoto lens. Quite often these act as supplementary lenses over a lens which is back there. So there's the main lens and these act as supplementary lenses and you simply rotate the tut. In the late 50s, early 60s, you were beginning to get um, different types of exposure meter and quite often you would have a little lever or pointer. This camera is almost like a magic eye. The meter there controls a little cell beneath the lens so the aperture is automatically set. This camera is still clockwork but it's beginning to be rather more sophisticated. Three lenses, clockwork, but automatic aperture. The Europeans were strong in the making of cine cameras at this time. However, you are beginning to get some really good Japanese cameras coming on the market. And the Japanese cameras were a little bit more forward thinking. This Canon, this Movie Zoom 8, not only has automatic exposure and um, a zoom lens now. So you can zoom up to the subject and it even has, I think, a motorized zoom. Plus it had the added feature that you could backwind the film and get some special effects. The last camera I'm going to look at is the Minolta. A really fine single lens camera, zoom, beautifully designed, beautiful in sight. 8mm cameras had gone a, come a long way in design and the quality of images was fine. It was actually very good. Apart from the fact that the area of film was small and it was a uh, complete faff to do all this thing of putting the film in, running it, then having to turn over. Kodak, in market research, found that it was actually putting people off buying cameras. Therefore, they came up with a different type of film. Something called Super 8 was bought out in 1963 and that is a completely different story about cameras. You can still get 8mm film. There's a Czech company called Former that produces a really good black and white version of the film. 
Um, it's quite expensive to get processing, although you can process it yourself. 8mm, regular 8 um, as it was known in the States, standard 8 as it was known in this country, an interesting time in cinefilm. Have a look for some cameras and I look forward for hopefully you watching another video next time, probably on Super 8. Bye for now.